All right, that should be long enough. So, shorts test again. No shorts. And we'll move on to the tube test. 3000 micromo range, and that's a very good tube. So that confirms what I got with my simple emission tester that it's a good tube. And now for the micromos. Put this on GM and do the test. So I got right about 1500. I'll refer to my manual again. Now by the time this manual was printed, a 24 was considered obsolete, so they only have the minimal data for it. Uh, but typical value they have for transconductance is 1,050 micromoles, so 1,500 is certainly better than that. And uh, I'll do the gas test quickly here. Well, that's a pretty big jump on the gas test. Hmm, so maybe this tube is a bit gassy. Yeah, huh. It's interesting to me because I don't think I've ever had a tube fail a gas test before, but that's certainly a pretty big jump. Now, I have used this tube in radio before, and it did work all right, but maybe it doesn't have a whole lot of life left on it. Let's see what I get for this little globe style. It's okay to pull a tube out and pop one in when it's the same type because all the settings are already set up properly for it. Put this back in for two. And clip back on. Okay. See, that's why I don't like this screen clip. Real pain in the butt. Okay, it's on there solid now, and the tube's warmed up, so short test again. Looks good. Tube test. It's a bit weaker, which I suspected because this is a used tube, and it's an old tube, older than the other one. But, still, still good on that uh, check. And, uh... Let's check the transconductance. Ooh, that's pretty weak there. It's just about a thousand. And if you recall the data sheet, or even a little less, the data sheet said 1050 was typical. So I suspect this has a little bit of life left, but it's definitely a bit worn out. So, uh, yeah, um, this tube tester seems to be doing everything it's supposed to be doing. Oh, I'm going to do the gas test on this. I hooked the tube back up and powered this back on so I can do that gas test. So, there's gas 1 held on. And when I hit gas 2, the needle just barely moves. So, boy, interesting that the older worn out tube <coughs> is a bit weak on the transconductance, but has no gas. Whereas this tube tests really good, but does have gas. Oh, uh huh. So, here's a quick look at the two websites I found to be very useful. First one is at jackmusic.com, and this has all the schematics for both the tester and the adapter, and settings for many many tubes far more than that are included in the standard manual and they also have instructions to make your own adapters for um, tubes like the 12AU7 and this site at tubesound.com 
has really detailed instructions on how to calibrate this device. Very easy to read, understand. Lots of photos and so on. So I will go through this whole procedure even though my uh, tester seems to be working fairly well. It doesn't hurt to double check all, this, all the uh, calibration settings. Here it is all reassembled. I used a little Simicrome metal polish on the plug. It's looking very nice and shiny now. I did my homework online, asked around, got a lot of great info. First off, they made these as late as 53 or 54. And the general opinion was that this wiring is all original. So mine is very likely one of the later production units, which would account for the, uh, the very nice, brightly colored wiring. I would also account for why this appears to have had very little use. Just a little bit of scratching on these sockets. Otherwise, this looks to be pristine. Um, this was getting kind of hot before with that 83 rectifier when I had it out of the cabinet. Now that it's in the cabinet, it can get, gets really toasty after prolonged use because there are no vent holes on this. So another great suggestion I got was to use one of these solid state 80 slash 83 rectifier tube replacements. It's basically two uh, heavy duty silicon diodes in here. The uh, 83 tube has a bit more of a voltage drop across it than a silicon replacement does, but with this line adjustment you've got enough of a range that you can still get it into the calibration range without having to add a series drop resistor. So may very well be doing that. Uh, oh, this this clip I was having trouble with. It turns out if you slide back this thick, heavy rubber insulation, it's much easier to clip this. So I was just using the ends of this claw here. But if you, you want to get that rounded area, and you put that over the, the tip on the tube, like like so. So much easier to work with like that. Yeah, all in all, I'm very, very happy with this. Uh, normally, I like to do a little restoration work myself because I think it's kind of fun. But for test equipment, I have no qualms, no problems with getting one that's completely functional as is. Uh, now, as I mentioned, the reason I really wanted to get one of these was to test old tubes. Specifically, some of these Primo tubes I've been slowly collecting for some of my... Um, rarer radios. Well, for example, I have a Philco 15DX I've been slowly restoring. That's from 1932 and it used type 42 tubes. Well, they only made them in the globe style for one year and then they switched to the shoulder type. Looks a little more like that. Um, and that's what I came with. But I've been slowly looking, not slowly, but I should say I've been looking for a long time. Uh, and I have finally found a few. I've, I've checked them in an emissions tester and they check, okay, not, not like new, but certainly serviceable. But now I can finally test this and this guy and see how well it actually work as the output uh, amplifier. And it, is a, it does use two of these push-pull uh, output configuration, so I want to get two that are fairly well matched. So as a final uh, demonstration of this tester, I'm going to set it up for this Type 42 and give it a try. Oh, something I forgot to mention. I was surprised at how well this was working and seemed to be within calibration and so on. It turns out that just about every single resistor in this is a wire wound type resistor. And unlike carbon composition resistors, those tend to stay well within spec uh, even after decades. Now, even though I've gone over this, I'm still a little bit paranoid about <laughs> potentially ruining one of these expensive tubes. So I'm going to use the uh, a shoulder type 42 first, and then I'll uh, go for the globe. Pop that puppy in. Turn it on. Do the line test. Fine. Wait for it to warm. 
Okay, it's warmed up. So, shorts test. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing. No shorts. And for the test, it tests good. And I, I knew it wasn't good too because I've actually used it in the radio. And as for the micro mo reading, it is about 2200. If I'm reading that right, yeah, yeah 2200. Okay, that's warmed up. So, first up, shorts test. No shorts. So, I'll go on the tube test. And push the run button. And it's a good tube, as I already knew because I've used it in radios. And the micro modes, it looks like it's 2100 right in the nose. And I'll pull out my trusty RCA manual once again. Oh wow, <laughs> there's really no info on this too, so obsolete. So it's electrically identi identical with the Type 6F6. So let's see what they have for the transconductance for that. Well, there's several different modes of operation. Fixed bias, cathode bias, class A1, and so on. But it looks like the micro here is around 2500, 2550 for this mode. Um, so, well, let's, let's consider that to be a good range. So this is a little, little shy of that. Now, let's check the globe version. All right, here goes. No shorts, no shorts, no shorts, no shorts, no shorts. All right, all important to test. And bam. Hey, that is not bad. It's not bad for a used tube from 1932 at all. Like I said, these type 42 globe tubes are quite hard to come by. I'll have to pull out my other two, and hopefully two out of the three will be fairly closely matched, and those are the ones I'll use in the radio. Now, final thing, instruction notice. This is what came with this tester. In case you were under enemy attack and they were about to overrun your position, you may be ordered to destroy this tube tester. Why? To prevent the enemy from using or salvaging this equipment for his benefit. When? When ordered by your commander. How? Smash. Use sledges, axes, hand axes, pickaxes, hammers, crowbars, heavy tools. Cut. Use axes, hand axes, machetes. Burn. Use gasoline, kerosene, oil, flamethrowers, incendiary grenades. Explosives. Use firearms, grenades, TNT. Disposal. Bury in slit trenches, foxholes, other holes. Throw in streams. Scatter. Use anything immediately available for destruction of this equipment. What? Smash. Meters. Controls. Panels. Cut. Cables and all wiring. Burn. Resistors, capacitors, all technical manuals, instruction books, tube charts. Barrier scatter. Destroy everything.